Here we are again. So, James, it's kind of a weird, like, loop because you actually teased the Book of Clarence in The Harder They Fall. Did you always know that this was going to be your next project? I always knew the Book of Clarence was going to be my next project because I, I thought it was, like, the ultimate one-two punch. First, I take you to the Old West. Then we kind of glide by the New Testament. <laughs> Hard. As you do, as you do. And what is it about this setting that interested you? Well, really, it's just about what is it about storytelling in general. You know, I wanted to tell a story about the environment that I grew up in, right? Um, Harrow Road, Kilburn Lane, Mozart Estate. But I wanted, exactly. You know what I mean, though? So all you guys used to be on the run like me. <laughs> and then, but I wanted to set it in the, in the biblical era so I can have, I can show kids a story that they can relate to and show them a people and that they can relate to and it just resemble the environment that they grew up in, but also the things that we go through. I wanted to show how similar everything is, how alike everything was from then to now, and also just reintroduce tales about innocence and hope. Mm. You know what I mean? And Tendo and James, what was it that drew you to this project? Well, uh, first and foremost is originality. Um, the, the, the last movie we worked on in this one, it's really original <laughs> stories. But selfishly, James makes it really easy. He conceives the story, he writes the script, he directs the actors, he writes the songs. So all we have to do is just kind of be there as Guy, guy Rail. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to, to bring something original to the screen. How about you, Tendo? Perfect. And, and as a crazy a storyteller, amazing a storyteller as this gentleman is, he's a better human being, so. That makes it all worth it. Oh, thank you, Tendo. <laughs> I want to say, I want to say, I, ju I just want to say though, you know, to all filmmakers out there, this London Film Festival, so there'll be a lot of filmmakers in the audience. Like, you surround yourself with dope producers. You are totally free. Art is about inclusion and diversity and freedom. But that freedom comes, man, with a dope team. And you ain't getting a doper team than James Lasseter. Tendo Nagenda and Sean Carter. And, and, and it gives you everything you want. Oh yeah, and by the way, JL, if you watch The Harder They Fall and get upset that Jim Beckwith died, the quick draw is JL's fault. He made me kill him. I don't know why this guy made me kill him. Up to now, I'm like, I should have made him live anyway. <laughs> Everyone's gonna be queuing around stage door after the film, I'm gonna have a word with you. Exactly. Uh, you mentioned your other producer, Mr. Carter. And I know he also collaborated on the soundtrack with you, which is gorgeous. It's going to sound amazing in here. Can you tell us a little bit about your process with uh, scoring the film? Yeah, you know, I write the, um, I compose the score for the movie. I write and produce, and in this case, perform uh, the songs. But I write the script at the same time as I compose the score. So it's almost like I see music and I hear film. And working with Jay-Z, you know, he's an incredibly cine-literate individual. And so a lot of the times it's like, me, him, JL, and Tendo, and just going back and forth on story. And it kind of automatically bleeds into music. Like, I work with Jay-Z Jay as much on the film as I work with James Lester on songs and just song ideas and, you know, that kind of stuff. It's almost like, I have a motto, obey your crazy. That child in you, never grow up. And surround yourself with a bunch of crazies that never grew up, and you truly will fly. You know what I mean? And before we watch the film, speaking of surrounding yourself with people, the cast of this film is incredible. And it's also a really global cast. You've got people from England, London, Scotland, France, Senegal, the United States. Uh, was it an intentional choice to make this such a global cast? Yeah, I, it was intentional for me to just make it as global as possible because, you know, we're setting a film in ancient Jerusalem, right? We're setting it like a, a super period. Like in 10 years from now, this film will be set 2,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. So it's the perfect opportunity to get like people from London, right, England, the UK, and people from France, and people from America, and just put, bring them all together, and really just show that we're all one. You know what I mean? In the world, in the world inside my rainbow, we're from everywhere, man. You know what I mean? We're from everywhere, we're, but we're all in the, same, in the same place. There is no division. My brain has no passports.
Well, unless there is anything that any of you would like to add. I would add. <laughs> you know, I'm a really shy individual, so I'm nervous up here. Um. I would add that this is really important, right? It's really important. I'm going to walk forward a little bit. <laughs> once upon a time, once upon a time, there was an influential but misguided individual, right? And, he, and I've been saying this for the past few days. He turned the words intention, aims, and plans into dreams, right? And the moment we embrace that word, my dream house, my dream project, my dream movie, we embrace the word failure. You can't hold a dream. Those thoughts that you have, they're real thoughts. Those aims, those intentions, those ambitions, it's not your dream to become something or tell a story or your dream car. It's your aims, your plans, your ambitions, your intentions. So when you watch those, this, this movie and you hear the music and you see all the characters in their journey, remember, this is delivered to you by a guy from Harrow Road. <laughs> from the hood, from the hood. My younger brother Ariel and my sister Tanya is here. And you can do anything, you can do anything you want. Don't let anybody, don't let anybody sealing your destination with their limitations. When that happens, you're looking at a hater. Jump spiritually out of your body and spiritually kick them out of your cipher and just get to creating. This is a pleasure. I can't say it any better than that. James, Tendo, James, thank you so much for being here and enjoy the thank book you. of Clarence. Let's go.